you know how it feels like it's maybe getting better in India? That's exactly how Europe and America felt for a while until a second wave hit. And if the first wave was any indication, then Latin America and Asia are next. Hi, I'm Pallavi Prasad, and here's what you need to know to stay ahead of the COVID-19 curve. For the last six weeks straight, daily new cases have been declining. The steepest fall came last week. India recorded 16% fewer new infections than the week before. Last week, deaths from the virus also fell by 19%. On Sunday, India recorded 480 deaths, the lowest in three months. There's more. As of Sunday, the number of recoveries crossed 90% of all cases, which means that close to 71 lakh people out of 79 lakh people have recovered. Now, it's been exactly seven months since the first lockdown. And while the numbers speak for themselves, experts say that this could be the calm before a familiar storm. Towards the end of August, when the worst was just beginning for India, Europe and Russia seemed out of danger. America had plateaued while holding its position as the worst hit country, and so did Latin America. Cities were reopening, vacations were back on, schools and work had adapted, all with the standard set of COVID-19 protocols and advisories. None of it worked, really. In the last 24 hours, France has reported 52,000 new cases, the highest daily increase for the country since the pandemic began. The head of the scientific council that advises the French government told CNN that the second wave is and most definitely will be worse than the first one. Spain's prime minister wants to declare a state of emergency until May 9, 2021 to curb soaring infections. Italy also recorded its highest daily new cases, but the leadership is in a fix because, as the prime minister said, Italy cannot afford a second lockdown. In the UK, more than new infections, the death toll is the number to watch. It has been slowly rising over the past two weeks. And Wales has rolled the clock back to March 2020 and has been put under a tight national lockdown. For the West, America's situation is particularly concerning. Its seven-day average of new daily cases has touched heights not seen since the pandemic began. And it remains the country with the largest caseload in the world with over 8.6 million infections and over 225,000 deaths. And in a week, the country will go vote. The last lap of campaigning is in full swing with Vice President Mike Pence running for re-election on the Republicans' ticket out and about on the campaign trail. At least five people, including his chief of staff and advisor, have tested positive in the last 24 hours. When asked why he wasn't in quarantine for 14 days per the rules, his office said it was because he was essential personnel. But coming back to India now, these developments across the world, they are writings on the wall. For what is to exempt India from a second wave? A festive season when it finally feels like the pandemic is slowing down. Colder, stiller air in the winter months. A spike in air pollution, especially in North India. Experts say that the odds are stacked against us and that the essential nature of waves dictates that a second wave is highly likely to hit India. And it's not like the, the end of the first wave, if I can call it that, left us in a very strong position. India is still averaging 764 COVID-19 deaths a day, which is the worst in the world. India is still reporting an average of over 57,000 new cases daily. And though our testing has increased dramatically to close to 1.3 million daily, at 71.5 tests per 1,000 people, India is still far behind other countries. New cases in Delhi broke a 38-day record for the state yesterday. West Bengal has seen a sharp spike with 4,000 new cases yesterday. 
Eight days after opening, schools in Mizoram have closed again after local transmission of cases increased. And Nagaland has put a total lockdown back on the table for discussion. Kerala, of all states, continues its inexplicable rise at 10% its positivity rate. That is how many people test positive from among those who get tested is much higher than the national figure. And though new cases in Maharashtra have dipped significantly, it still has the most COVID-19 deaths in the country even months later. I'll end here for today with a very strong sense of deja vu. But if this COVID-19 bulletin adds value for you, please share. We're also on YouTube. The link to that is in our bio. Thank you so much for your time. Stay safe and wear a mask.